This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. If you flip through the Rolodex of names in your brain, surely there's a list of people that you've known throughout your life that have been influential in shaping and molding who you are today. Perhaps you might even consider these people to be saints. Well, my search would include a stop with the letter H as I would find a woman that I held in high esteem, my godmother and aunt, Susan Hogan. Summer was always fun growing up. Sure, the big perk was that we were out of school, but I always looked forward to our annual trip north to Minnesota. Now, this trip would include fishing and swimming, pizza and donuts, kickball and tennis, but it would always begin with the same first stop, and that was at the Hogan household. Now, my Aunt Susan, she would always host us on the back deck with an assortment of snacks and beverages for us to enjoy. She was the hostess with the mostess. But what I really loved was just sitting there and listening to her hold court. I mean, there was no doubt who was in charge of this time that we shared together. She directed the conversations with the thought-provoking questions to engage the family in discussions. And when she sensed that the conversations had maybe kind of, you know, just run its course, or if she was just plain getting bored with it, which happened from time to time, she would abruptly move on to another subject without worrying about the awkward transition. New topic, new question, she would announce. Susan always had to know the details, or as we would like to say, know the D's, and she had to be in the middle of everything all the time. There's a popular phrase these days, and that is FOMO, or the fear of missing out. I think that this phrase was probably coined after her because she never wanted to be left out. Susan was also the definition of cool. She would lean back in her chair on that deck, eyes hidden behind her shades, as she smoked on a cigarette. I remember telling myself that if I were to ever smoke, I definitely would smoke Vantage cigarettes because that's what she puffed on. Now, I didn't pick up that habit of smoking cigarettes, but I did pick up some life lessons. Because I held Susan in high such esteem, her word was gold to me. She would talk and I would listen and I'd take it to heart, even if it wasn't directed to me. Well, one piece of advice that she imparted on me that is not only wedged in my head, but that I also have somewhat adopted as a mantra is to try new things. She would tell us that life is so full of many different opportunities and experiences that we shouldn't miss out on something that is awesome and great because we are scared to give it a try. Try new things. You won't like everything you try, but you might just discover something that you do like and enjoy, and life will become that much richer and fuller for you. And for what it's worth, I think it was purely coincidental that on the day that she dispensed this sage advice, the snack that she was serving was sardines on saltine crackers. Come on, Eric, try new things. Well, Jesus didn't dispense advice while he was sitting on a deck between drags of a cigarette, but you better believe that he held a captive audience and he had words that would transform the people's hearts and their souls. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus is sitting along a hillside along the Sea of Galilee, and with him is a large crowd of followers who hold him in high esteem and who want to know more. Jesus is holding court. He has some thought-provoking advice for these people who want to know how life might become richer and fuller for them. His advice is known to us as the Beatitudes or the Blessings. How might one experience blessing in life? We all want to know. We are all listening intently like that crowd, hanging on to every last word. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Blessed are the peacemakers. At first glance, we might not really be sure as to the direction that Jesus is going here. But what Jesus is doing here is describing himself. He is saying, this is how I live. I am merciful. I seek peace. My heart is pure. I hunger and I thirst for righteousness. I mourn and have compassion for others. I'm reviled and I'm persecuted for my beliefs. I'm a child of God, and you are too. 
Jesus says that because we follow him in his ways, we too are children of God. Not sometime far off in the future, but now. The blessings of God belong to us because we seek to be in a loving relationship with Jesus. We are blessed because Jesus is a part of our lives and because he demonstrates to us how to live, how to serve, and how to love. Now, the great thing about this relationship is that it can never be taken away from us. It withstands the pains, the sorrows, and the griefs of life, and it's more powerful than death itself. Life together with our Lord is the most precious commodity that we can have, and it is all ours when we call upon Jesus to be present and active in our lives. 1 John 3, 1 says the following, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. This love is not based on things that we have, the condition we're in, the strength of our faith, our status within society, our knowledge of the Bible, or our adherence to the law. This love is from our Heavenly Father, the one who created us, the one who continues to love us despite our slip-ups and our imperfections and our flaws, the one who sent his Son in order to restore our relationship with him, the one who has claimed us as his own. The love of God through Christ is that wrecking ball that breaks down those fabricated walls that we as a society put up in order to separate the haves from the have-nots, the walls that separate us from them or whatever the categories might be. The love of God pulls each and every believer together into one community, and it is through the teaching of Jesus, these Beatitudes in particular, that we become aware that we are all bound together as the body of Christ. We are truly blessed when we are in relationship with Jesus and when we walk in his ways of service and love. Today is All Saints Sunday when we remember those disciples and the followers in the faith who've paved the way for us. These saints have shared the story of Jesus with us, thus making life richer and fuller for us. As children of God, we are now given the unique opportunity to be saints ourselves as we help others discover the blessedness that Jesus can bring to their lives too. May we inspire others to try a new thing, that new thing being Jesus, so that they realize and recognize that life with God is indeed good. They certainly won't want to miss out on this. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So, Why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? We'll see y'all next week. Later.